Turnabout goodbyes. Uh, day two trial from chapter start. December 26, 9:44 a.m. District Court Defendants Lobby Number Two. Karma? That's right, Manfred von Karma. He's the best prosecutor there is. He hasn't lost a case in his 40-year career. He's the god of prosecution, right? A god. Not a single case? He'll do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. Hmm. Sounds like someone I, uh, else I know, Edgeworth. Hmm. You don't understand. I mean, he'll really do anything. Manfred von Karma is a man to be feared. That's quite a claim coming from someone who forges evidence. He taught me what it really means to prosecute. What? Just picture a prosecutor as vicious as me, multiplied by a factor of 10. Oh boy. This is gonna be interesting. I'm not looking forward to this case. Uh, so, so he was your teacher then, Mr. Edgeworth? Something like that. And now he's trying to get you found creepy? Guilty? What a creep. Oh, wait. Maybe he's planning on losing on purpose to help you out. I doubt that. You know, not a chance. He hasn't lost once in 40 years. 40 years. He's as ruthless as me. Times 20. That's pretty ruthless. Like I said, he's a god among prosecutors. I guess that's something Mia was to me. Speaking of Mia... Um, Maya? Uh-huh. We could really be using Mia's help right now, don't you think? Oh. I can't. Sorry, I tried. I really tried, but I couldn't reach. You couldn't reach? I think it's because I haven't been training. My powers are weak again. Oh man. What bad timing. I'm really sorry. I'll try my best. I hope so. What are you whispering about? Uh, oh, oh, it's nothing. Well, it's time. Let's head in. So we're against the man Edgeworth even fears. December 26, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Whoa. He, he does not look happy. Uh, Mr. Von Karma, is the prosecution ready? Fool. You seriously think that I would stand here were I not completely prepared? Right, my apologies. He's even got the judge scared. Very well, your opening statement, please. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Uh, er, nothing, of course. That should be fine. The prosecution may call its first witness. What's this guy? Is he royalty or something? How am I supposed to fight against this? I call the detective in charge of the case, Detective Dick Gumshoe. Okay, Gumshoe's first. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> Gumshoe can't really lie, though. Describe the incident. Now. <laughs> Yes, sir. The death of Gumshoe looks nervous. Er, uh, please take a look at the map. The murder happened late Christmas Eve, around midnight. There was one boat in the middle of the lake. And there were two men on the boat. Now, there happened to be a woman camping here on the edge of the lake. At 12.10, she heard two pistol shots. Then the boat started to move. It went towards the boat rental shop. Overheard, overhead map added to the court record. Testify to the court about your arrest. Now. Wait, Mr. Von Karma. Yes. Actually, I'm the one who's not supposed to be handling these proceedings. Wrong. There is only one thing you need to do here. You will slam down your gavel and say the word guilty. That is your role. Yes, of course. You're quite right. No, no he's not. Witness testimony, the arrest of Edgeworth. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this. A man called into the station around 30 minutes after midnight. We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. 
that's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. Now, I didn't expect him of anything at all, but the next morning, a body was found in the lake. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, uh, I missed that. No, I have risen too fast. Uh, begin your cross-examination now. <laughs> the judge is just sitting there, like, okay. Uh, the arrest of Edgeworth, cross-examination. A man into the station after midnight. Um... Why? Oh, probably because of the gunshots. Oh, I'll press anyway, I need more information than this. You received a call from a man. Er, yep. But you said there was a woman camping there. She was the one who heard two gunshots, right? Ob objection! Oh god! What was that? Um, okay. That was like a metal objection. I'm not looking forward to that. Uh, that woman and the man who called in the report are two different people, obviously. Different people? There were two witnesses. Their testimonies were quite similar, however. Today I've summoned the woman who was camping. The woman who was camping, a lot of heart. Also, summoned? I like. Uh, what happened next, Detective? We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. What was he doing there? What was Mr. Edgeworth like when you saw him then? Well, from what I saw, he looked pretty relaxed. Not like a murderer at all, really. Objection. <laughs> Objection. Uh, detective. The court requires the facts, not your opinion. How many years have you been on the force? Uh, facts only, detective. Hard, cold, objective facts. Uh, yes, sir. Man, he's got his share of objections. Yeah, I know, this is, uh, this is gonna be really rough. Now, I didn't expect him of anything at all. And why did you not expect, uh, suspect him of anything? Why didn't you think he was suspicious? You should know. We have a deep, trusting relationship with the prosecutors. Oh, God. <laughs> He's just going to object to everything. Detective, your court isn't interested in your musings. Deep, trusting, poppycock. I've never heard so many flippant comments from an active detective on the force. Mm. Detective Gumshoe doesn't look so good. Continue. Now. But the next morning, a body was found in the lake. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Body was found in the lake. Did you find any clues on the body? A single bullet was recovered from the body. He was shot through the heart. Fatally. Judge, here's the bullet. It didn't strike bone, so its shape is well preserved. Very well, the court accepts this bullet into evidence. Pistol bullet added to the court record. Okay, now we have a bit more evidence. I'm not presenting this, but I just want to look. Uh, found in the victim's body, fired from a 22 caliber pistol. Okay, so we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Why is that? Well, we found the murder weapon in the boat. Nope, oh, I had to sneeze there. The murder weapon. A pistol. Detective Gumshoe, that is a vital piece of information. Please, revise your testimony. Right, S sorry, your honor. The murder weapon we found in the boat was decisive evidence. Well, do, uh, something else to press on. I need as much of, uh, just knowledge as I can on this case. What about the pistol made it decisive evidence? 
this, this, oh no, he's doing the this, this, this. He's one of those. Ugh. He has the same evil laugh as Edgeworth. There are fingerprints on the pistol found on the boat. They were clear prints from Mr. Edgeworth's right hand. What? Uh, that's pretty hard evidence. Order, order. So Mr. Edgeworth's fingerprints were found on the murder weapon. Yes, y your honor. Judge, this is the weapon in question. Uh, accepted into evidence. Pistol added to the court record. Members of the court. We now have the pistol used in the murder, and the bullet found in the body. Detective. Uh, yes, sir? Was the bullet found in the body fired from this pistol? Yes. The ballistic markings on the bullet match the pistol. Hmm. Hey, Nick. What does he mean, ballistic markings? Shocking. To imagine someone here does not know something as basic as ballistic markings. Nick, he's glaring at me. Tis. Very well. I'll explain. Actually, Judge, you do it. Uh, me? Uh, uh huh. Ballistic markings are like the fingerprints of a gun. The barrel leaves distinctive marks on each bullet it fires. You can examine these ballistic fingerprints to see which gun fired the shot. It's actually, uh, it's quite accurate. Indeed. This leads to one inevitable conclusion. The bullet found in the victim's heart was without a doubt fired from this pistol. The pistol which, as you may recall, was covered with the defendant's own fingerprints. Uh, order, order. This is bad. This makes it look like Edgeworth did it. Well, Judge. I'd say it's almost decisive. Yes. Honestly, I could declare the verdict at this point. However... You wish to hear the witness speak, no doubt. Very well. I am somewhat fatigued, and so I will take a brief break. I will call my witness after the recess, which will last ten minutes. Judge? Yes? What are you doing? A ten minute recess. Now. But wait, I... Just bang your flimsy gavel and get on with it, man. Yes. Ahem. This court will take a ten minute recess. Who's running this court anyway? Well, definitely not the judge right now. December 26th, 11.09 a.m., District Court, Defendant's Lobby, number two. Edgeworth, what's going on here? Your fingerprints were found on the murder weapon. Uh, hmm. And that foggy photo makes one thing clear. The only one who could have shot that man was the person in that photo. True. Was it that you in the boat? Yes, it was me. What? But, you must believe me. I didn't shoot him. Then who did? I, I don't know. You don't know? Weren't you right there? I heard a gunshot from very close by. And then, the other man fell from the boat. I can't say why, but... I thought, at the time, that he had shot himself. You mean it was a suicide? That's only... that's the only explanation I can come up with. Huh, how am I going to convince anyone of that? Say, Maya? Huh, what? Any progress, Mia? Oh, sorry, it's no good. Uh, I know. I'm no good for anything, am I, Nick? If I can't call my sister, I might as well not be here, right? Uh, I still probably need you. Yeah, I'll just... you stay. There's no point sending her off. If she ever... like, she might be able to help out eventually. No, of course not. I need you here. I can see you're always trying to help out. Even if you don't actually help, it's the thought that counts, right? It's okay, Nick. You don't have to f make me feel better. I don't know anything about the trials or defense. What's more, I'm a spirit medium who can't even contact spirits. Oh, uh, everyone has their day off days. I mean, I've just been lucky getting lucky lately. But you never know when my luck is gonna run out. Really? Whoa, right. 
Don't jinx this case that is al any worse than it already is. It's bad for my heart. Oh? Oh. Uh, sorry. Whoops. Court's back in session. Mr. Von Karma, call your witness. Yes. Will Miss Lotta Hart take the stand? Lotta Hart, you are a research student at a university. That I am. Good. Begin by telling us what you saw the night of the incident. And don't add anything trivial or subjective. Understand? Y'all need to learn some manners. Understand? Yeah, I, I understand. I understand. Uh, very well. Your testimony, please. Testimony. Witnesses account. It was Christmas Eve. Just after midnight, I reckon. It was in my car. I heard this bang come from the lake. When I looked out the window, I saw two gents in a boat. And then there was another bang. There wasn't nary a thing on the lake, but that boat. Enough. Huh? Judge, she happened to take a photo of the incident. This is that photo, accepted as evidence. Well, this is a surprise. It looks like the very moment of the murder. Order, I will remove you from this court if I do not have order immediately. As the witness testified, she looked at the lake when she heard the shot. There were no other boats on that lake, so the man in the boat with the victim must have been the murderer, the one who shot him. Yes, it was the defendant, Miles Edgeworth. Order, order, order. I will have order. Well, Judge. The evidence is decisive. I have very little doubt about this case. Very well, this court finds that the defendant. Wait, Your Honor. I haven't cross-examined the witness yet. A cross-examination? We have photographic proof. What question can there possibly be? This photo is worth a thousand words, and they all read guilty. You lose. Or, do you claim to have found a contradiction in her testimony? Very well. If you have to, you may cross-examine the witness. You will only flounder and ask meaningless questions. You will fail to find anything. And then, I will have you held in contempt of court. Uh, Nick. Contempt? Contempt of court, you know? I guess I understand. Well, what are you going to do? Do you really think there was a contradiction with the facts in her testimony? Oh, boy. I have to, honestly, or they're just going to find Edgeworth guilty, but in general, um... Uh, yeah, I just, I have to go on. I think there was. Uh, I think I noticed one little thing. Wow, I'm impressed, Nick. I didn't notice anything. Right, let's take him on. Yeah, I got a bad feeling about this. I understand. I will cross-examine the witness. This, this, very well. I pray for your sake this isn't a waste of time. Witnesses account. Cross-examination. Okay, it was Christmas Eve, just after midnight, I reckon. Okay, just after midnight. You were in your car. I heard the spaying up from the lake. Why were you in your car? Why were you camping there anyway? I'm a research student at the, my university. I was taking pictures to use in my research. What research? This all sounds suspicious. Press further. Miss Hart? Could you please be more specific with your research? Oh god, the injection. What does the witness's motive in camping by the lake have to do with this case? The answer is nothing. I object to this line of questioning. Objection sustained. Wait now, I'm the one who says that. Well, then say it already. 
Objection sustained. Thanks for nothing, Your Honor. Wow. Alright. I'm going to pause this before I continue on with 